the voice of God in this last days. It's a very outstanding time. And God has promised to meet the need of the hour. He always does that. And we need the voice of God today to meet the need of the hour. Amen. Meet the time that we're living in. And after He has promised it, we can rest assured that He will keep His promise. That's the confidence that the believer has in his Maker, that he promised to meet the need. And today, one reason that the church is in the condition that it's in is because there is so many voices, so many other voices to attract the church from the voice of God till it's very doubtful that many would hear the voice of God though it spoke right in their midst. They perhaps wouldn't even understand it because it would be a foreign thing to them. They have got themselves so much centered on the voices of the day. And if we notice in our scripture reading that the voice of God was foreign to them. And it's become that way again today, that the voice of God, there is so many other voices. And then if God promised He would give us that, and if other voices are contrary to the voice of God, then it must be the voice of our enemy to confuse us, that we would not understand the voice of God when it spoke. There is so many voices in the earth today that it is absolutely a hard thing because it deadens the voice of the supernatural. There is so many intellectual voices, great voices a mighty man who are intellectual, that in their intellectual conditions even shake the nations. They're just not overnight people, but they shake nations, bringing great organizations together, great campaigns, largely, and a person would be a bit confused. It's enough to confuse them of how that these things go on and prosper. And there's voices that, that raise up and do these things and it causes the voice of God to be placed way back somewhere. The true voice of God. And the voice of God, they say, how will we know it's the voice of God? Because for today, then, it was an vindicated prophet. Now, today, how we know it's the voice of God? Because it's the manifestation of the prophet's word. This is God's prophet. And a true voice of God only brings back that real, living, supernatural God with His supernatural Word, with the supernatural manifestation of the true Word, then we know that it's the voice of God. Because, and that's super, there's so much other in the other realms that just almost deaden that out. But remember, it will glisten. It'll come forth. It'll do it. Now, there is a voice today in the world of politics. That's a great voice. And people absolutely in this great day of politics, they are, it's all mixed up in their churches and everything. And many times that we have just seen recently 
that the voice of politics is actually stronger than the voice of God in the churches. Or the American people would have never did what they just done. They'd have never done it. If the voice of God would have been kept alive in the church, they'd have never made that mistake. But the voice of politic is so much stronger in the earth today than the voice of God until people sold their Christian birthright right. for a mess of popularity, education, and political power. It's such a shame to see it. The very thing that our nation was made what it's made of. The people turned right back around and and voted in the thing that we left the other country and the, and the Plymouth Rock and Mayflower and them uh, come over here and, est and establish this great economy that we have is the very thing that we fought so hard to come out of. We put ourselves right back in its clutches. Because that the Bible speaks it would be that way. But God promised that that trumpet would sound again. Always the people listens to the true voice of the Word. Always examine what you do by the Word. The voice of politics. And we in America and the rest of the world have a loud speaking voice today, and that's the voice of Hollywood. It's captured the world. Let somebody come out in Hollywood with something, you find it all over the country. Now, we notice that they have set a pattern for our women on their dress, their hairstyles. They set that dress. The church ought to know the voice of the trumpet of God on that. But there's so much confusion because, you see, others do so. Moses heard the voice of God. He was full of theology. He knew all the ins and outs, but it failed. He heard the voice of God. Moses was never the same. And no man is never the same. You might hear in your ears the, the voice speaking, but when you hear in your heart That's it. the voice speaking, then you're hearing. You do not see with your eye. You look with your eye. You see with your heart. You see something, say, I just don't see it. You mean you don't understand it. You do not hear with your ears. You hear with your heart. Many times your ears hears the true voice of God and it falls off you like water off of a duck's back. But when you really hear, you hear with your heart. And all the theology that Moses had, he hadn't heard the voice of God, but one day God called this 80-year-old sheep herder over to one side and spoke to him and he caught it. He proved that he was God. First thing he'd done to Moses is vindicate his word. I'm going down. I remember what I promised. And this is what he promised for the last days. Amen. To raise up a people from the Gentiles. All the promises. This I promised. Said Moses, take off your shoes. In other words, honor it. Now throw down your staff and a a dry stick off the desert became a serpent. And Moses caught it and went back to its condition again. See? He knew that was God because God said, the Word of God, the Word that He was speaking, said, throw down the stick in your hand. That's God's Word. Don't try to do the same thing. That ain't God's Word to you. That's God's Word to Moses. Here's God's Word to you. Throw down the stick. It turned to a serpent. So now you're afraid of it. 
Pick it up by the tail. Back it one again. God's word to him. What did he do? God vindicated his word. God said, Moses, throw down a stick. It'll turn to a serpent. He did it. He said, pick it up. It'll be a stick again. He did it. When God makes a promise of a ministry in this last days, he'll confirm it just exactly the way he said he would do it. Then you know you got the right boy. You're listening to the right thing because it's the word being confirmed. See? Oh, how I'm sorry. I, all right. Moses acted different. Look what a, a funny thing Moses done. Now, always when you're following the voice of God, you're crazy to the world. The uh, next day found Moses with his wife sitting on a view and a young and on her hip, or that's southern, child, on her hip. And there there was this old man with beard hanging down like this, his bald head shining, a stick in his hand, leading a little donkey, going right down toward Jesus if as hard as he could go. Somebody said, Moses, where are you going? Going down to Egypt to take the thing over. Wherewith he had failed as a young man. He had failed as a military man. But here he was going down to take over. And he did it. Why? He had heard the voice of God and seen it vindicated. For his day, for the things that was to be in his day, he saw it. Paul, a self-styled Pharisee, just as full of theology as he could be. But one day, he heard the voice of God. He saw a pillar of fire. And he knew there was something different. It changed his life. No matter how many Pharisees, how many Gamaliels or anything else could cry out to Paul, you're wrong, you're wrong. Paul had heard the voice of God. He knew it was the truth. Peter, religious as he could be, keeping the traditions of the elders, he would not eat any meat. No, sir. He would have nothing to do about it at all. He was really keeping the traditions of the elders right to the word. What happened? One day he heard the voice of God. Don't call that common unclean when I make clean. He was a changed man. He was ready to go anywhere the Lord sent him. Closing, I might say this. There was a man one time who was a believer. He had been dead four days. He was in the grave, stinking, rotten. But he heard the voice of God speak, Lazarus, come forth! And if it brought a man forth after being dead and rotten, what ought it to do to a church that still has life in it? Amen. It ought to resurrect them in the mess of all of these voices that we've talked about. Religious, politics, Hollywood, all the false prophecies and things that's gone out. In the midst of all of it, the true voice of God will call a man that's dead in sin and trespasses to life again. It ought to take a backslidden church and call it to life again. Sure. Remember, in closing, I say this, then I'll close. Jesus said the time would come when all that was in the grave would hear the voice of God. You're going to hear it. No matter what condition you're in, you're going to hear it anyhow. And some of them that come out of the grave will come to condemnation. They hear the voice, but it's condemning. And if you hear it today, the day after so long a time when you hear my voice, harden not your hearts, as you did in the days of provocation. If you Pentecostal people grouping yourself out in creeds again, and worldliness, having a form of godliness and denying the power thereof, before you have to rise in the resurrection to be condemned because the voice of God that speaks to you now through the Word will condemn you in that day. If you're just a lukewarm believer, the voice of God cries in your heart this morning, you are a lukewarm believer, you'd better repent. You man, women, boys, or girl, that's not living for Christ, and the voice of God speaks to you through His Word and says, Stop doing that! You better do it. Because you're going to hear it again one day, and it'll condemn you. You can't deny it. It's speaking to you now. 
And remember, it's recorded. And those who does riot and hears his voice will rise. The righteousness, the glory, the heaven. So you're going to hear the voice of God sometime. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, and the bright and morning star. And the Spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely.